Fourth, yeah. fourth, third, or whatever. Yeah. Very fun. Um, and um, I this haven't is a... gotten kicked out yet. No, 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 no. stab, stab. You're a very welcome guest, and anybody you want to invite, and we appreciate your input very much. Mm -hmm. And um, what we do is we talk about uh, the agriculture field, um, the science behind it, um, and pretty much anything else that we want the general public to, to learn about. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is the best format that I can think about. Um, visiting the, the internet and reading about it, it's cool, but it takes time here. We're just going to go straight to your earballs and your eyes mm -hmm. and uh, bring it to you. And this is one of the many formats that we can, we can prevent, pre set information uh, that is related to agriculture. We do have, uh, through the extension service, we have educational formats as well where we do workshops for people. Mm -hmm. uh, we do field days. We do... Uh, Working on doing videos, uh, all that stuff, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Where can we find all that stuff? Is that on your Facebook or the? Yeah, you can go to face to our Facebook. Um, you can also call our uh, or email us. Uh, you can call the office eight six three seven seven three twenty one sixty four. You can get on your, our mailing list. We you, know, you can follow us on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we have four H as well, where we're working on youth development and opportunities for our youth to uh, understand life and better prepare themselves for adulthood. Yeah, so. and you mean real life, not Facebook. No, 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 no. Oh, that's not real? <laughs> on, all, on all aspects, okay? There we go. And adulting is difficult. Um, it's and, getting harder, uh, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we're getting older. Yeah, well. But we have to prepare our youth for, for the realities of life. Mm -hmm. And the importance of agriculture. I mean, holy moly! They don't, yeah, even, yeah. they don't even know where the food comes from. You know, they they don't know. Yeah, I mean, you'd be amazed how many people, uh, or how many children actually don't, uh, which live in our community, don't have uh, enough exposure to, you know, what's happening. Uh, but we do have partners in the community that help us with education, either through uh, putting on e events or actually funding some of those events gotcha You're trying to break through that uh, insulation of mm -hmm. of just ignorance you know yep. because there's this like there's a separation between us and the supermarket mm -hmm. you know there's that you go to the supermarket and like oh i'm buying this and this is that, that's all they know that's where it, that's where it stops you know yeah, some, I, mean? I think sometimes we just take it for granted that we we know because we're here we're mm -hmm. in agriculture but you know we take it for granted uh when you get in the inner cities they don't have a clue yeah and it is up to us and uh agriculture people and uh, agents who uh, inform them, educate Yeah, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. There's people out there that don't, have never even seen a goat before. You know, like, you go to New York City well, yeah, or something. There's, there's, there's goats GMO-free. <laughs> there, 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 there's, yeah. there's people that haven't tasted goat before. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of people, and that needs to be fixed. I'm just, that was a joke. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm, I'm reading. Yeah. You see, <laughs> did you see the comments that John put on there? You got to put context behind that, John. He's, yeah. He's just like GMO-free. Good morning. GMO-free. Hey, so is the GMO in jail? Yeah, it's free. Hey, it's all free. So yeah. you're asking to free GMO? Yeah, we're trying to free them. That's or you want to yeah. talk about that? Or no, what? I just, just I just, it's free. It just, it's just, I know it's a, it's, it's something that's brought up a lot on here. Yeah, that's one, be a good icebreaker today. One of the big, one of the big items. All right, let, let, let's start with our topic of the day. Okay. Uh, every every week, uh, we get some background information on it. We get together. Uh, Usually through text, and we we come up with uh, with a topic that we're gonna talk about uh, for the show. So uh, one of the I had a long list of uh, of issues that I want to address as time goes by, and one of the issues that I want to talk about today, or that that are on my list, is uh, is uh, honeybee uh, the status of the honeybees in the United States and the world. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, a long time ago. Uh, we didn't care about this stuff, but now with uh, the uh, information fire hose that we have uh, through social media, that's a good way to put I it. I like that information uh, fire. Hose. You know, there's there's people that are that are just uh, sharing information that is probably uh, based on partial truth, but not actually complete truth. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, 2016, uh, there was a publication uh, titled. Uh, well, National Geographic uh, titled a, 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 an article uh, uh, the, the following way. For the first time, bees declared endangered in the U.S. 
So, as a lay person, what do you what do you think about that? Oh, uh, I see a I see lay a person, twenty thousand right? dollar fine coming if you kill one. Okay. Anything else? Okay, say it again so we can you, you may, uh, comments. Yeah, you, yeah, you comment, feel comment. free to comment. You can, you, know. you can actually Google that, that article as well. For the first time, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. bees declared endangered in the U.S. For the first time, bees declared endangered. Okay, um, again, before I started digging into the whole bee pocket, you know, the bee thing being, um, and Jill, she was the, uh, she's, she runs the pet, uh, the Trust Again Pet Shelter, and she owns a station sign here in town. Mm-hmm. She is, uh, she deals with animals all the time. Mm-hmm. And she talked about the whole thing, and she did bring up the fact that, you know, there's this thing where if the bees are gone, then we're done. You know, like we're I saw that movie down. and it's yeah. total fake. Well, see, we don't know that exactly. Like <laughs> for me, I'm just like, oh no, oh no! If the bees are endangered, then we're screwed. That's mm-hmm. what I think as a normal person. Mm-hmm. You know, so what would the reality be? The reality is that that is 99% false with the way that it was marketed, the way that this headline was built was was dishonest. There are a how many? Uh, uh, popul- uh, species of bees. Uh, I thought like three. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't either. How many? Not the killer ones. How many, Matt? We, have, that we movie, have this written down somewhere bees, in our notes. Uh, the African, the, Af- the African killer bees. Remember those? Yeah. Oh, yeah they're, they're Great made, movie. All kinds of bees. You know, I went to the movies. Many bees, but that, you know, you got a field of bees and every every yeah, other kind yeah, of pollinator right, right out even, there. So there's know. there's bees and there's pollinators. Okay. okay. So there's uh, bees are pollinators. Mm-hmm. Poll- Humans can be pollinators. Okay, oh, right. wind yeah, is okay. a pollinator. Okay. So the reality is that there's thousands and thousands of different species of bees. What? Um, I didn't know that. <clears throat> so in the I'm U.S., off by, off by a couple thousand. Um, I'm, 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 I'm missing the number. I want to give you the the right information, the the, the number that I that I have. Um, when he said, "Why well, he's looking?" When he said, uh, people can be pollinators it was sort of cool i've watched something where i believe it's in china where they actually sell pollen mm. and they go and pollinate with q-tips oh, different okay. flowers they'll spend all day on a ladder pollinating different flowers that's pretty cool you know on a, on a fruit tree or something okay so the, the number the yeah. accurate number is uh this is uh, straight out of a publication a usda publication more than 30 uh 500 species of pollinator insects Okay, so meaning that uh, there's a lot more insects out there that do the job. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know how many of you saw B movie. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I have a two year old and yeah. he likes that movie. Uh, the bees go on strike, they go on vacation, yeah. and all of the uh, breaks down. Trees oh, start dying. That's probably a part of the the perception because I mean. Okay, there's that, like oh that so 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 uh, there's seven species of bees that are in danger. Okay. In Hawaii, the reclusive bees that are very uh, uh, specific pollinators to one native Hawaiian flower. Okay. Okay. Out of the so thousands. So those are the ones that are going into the endangered species list. The I- Apis mellifera, which is our domestic honeybee, the one that we commercially use for pollination, mm-hmm. it's actually the, the numbers are actually on a 20 year high. Okay. I saw that, like 2015 or 16, I saw the... Uh, so there was a crash uh, where we had a lot of loss um, due to a condition called colony collapse disorder. But uh, beekeepers have worked their way up selecting better bees, improving their management tools. Okay. And now we have we have a healthy 20-year uh, high uh, population. So that means that, no. We're not going to die. We're not going yeah. to crash. Uh, our our food system, it's actually doing good. Okay. Yes. So back to bee movie. Bees uh, go on strike. Uh, trees uh, start uh, losing their leaves. Flowers die. Uh, humanity goes to heck in a handbasket. But in reality, the population, the pollinators out there. Would replace the 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 bees out you know out there the okay. population. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So they just so and, and then there's an, there's another thing. Um, they say that 30 percent of our food, uh, close to 30 percent of our food, actually depends on honeybees. 
so we're not going to starve. So specific. the official number is 28 crops. Are specific the, to the yeah, are specific uh, that they actually need honeybees for pollination in the U.S. Gotcha, gotcha. And we're 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 growing hundreds and hundreds of crops. So uh, for you out there that have been indoctrinated in in this panic mode, mm -hmm. uh, you can you can sleep easy at night. You'll be fine. It's not gonna. It's not the end of the world if the bees. Come not out. yet. I'm sorry. Not yet. But the ones we don't need bees with is like broccoli and Brussels sprouts, lettuce, and, you know, all spinach stuff we don't really like anyway. So we still need the bees for the good we, stuff. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, I like honey. Honey's awesome. We got we got a lot of palmettos out here, uh, <laughs> and the palmettos are starting are going to start to bloom uh, later in the year. When they start blooming, you hardly see. Yeah, you hardly see bees. You see a lot more flies pollinating than you see bees. Okay. okay. Oh, That's, okay. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. So okay. something ugly as a fly, as uh, disgusting because they step on your dog poop and stuff. They're actually serving as pollinators. It's a purpose. They've got a purpose. Yes. Okay. Bats can be pollinators for specific crops. Gotcha. We have hand pollination tools uh, for greenhouse production. Mm -hmm. uh, just talk about tomatoes, for example. Uh, we do we do hand pollination. Okay. There's uh, the you know, hummingbirds uh, pollinate uh, specific uh, flowers like passion fruit um, that bees cannot pollinate because of the structure of the plant. So um, yeah, the, the the assumption that if we lose the bees, we're going to starve to death, mm -hmm. it's it's not accurate. It's uh, a partial uh, truth. Um, the other the other um, you know, there's there's a lot more myths out there. Yeah, yeah. But we're, but yeah, humanity is doing fine. Uh, Cheerios got a mascot. The honeybee. The honeybee. What's his name? He got a name. I forgot his name. I don't I know his name, guy. but he's not wearing pants, so he's not my friend. Um, yeah, that's that's Winnie the Pooh as well. Yeah, that's those Winnie are pants. just Daffy weird. Duck, all the old school stuff, man. Yeah. So anyway, so so there there's there's there, there's this notion that 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 bees are our friends, mm -hmm. but nobody wants to manage them. Nobody wants to handle them because they're afraid that they're going to get stung. Yeah, yeah. So if you're interested in bees, you should get a hive. You should start experimenting with them. You should see how they actually work and, 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 and dig deeper. Dig deeper. Yeah, I see. Okay. I got one for you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I, this is a side story about bees, but go ahead. What were you going to say? I was just going to uh, you know, comment on, on what he just said about you know, getting into the hobby beekeeping and, uh, you know, those people who love them, but they're scared of them. Yeah, it's one of them things to me where you, uh, you know, I know they sting, but you respect them. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know, you understand, okay, I know they can't sting me, so you go ahead and protect yourself yeah. for them. You well, know, just for them. Plus, it's a worse day for them because they die, don't they? Certain yeah, bees they'll, die. they'll die after they sting. Yeah, that's so, correct. Yeah. yeah. And we, in the colony, we have different types of bees. Yeah. Right. Uh, we have worker bees, which are the ones that that are the ones that you see out there working. We have uh, the queen, which stays in the hive. She only does one flight, and that's a mating flight. Yep. She gets. Uh, it's it's interesting. Uh, she gets out there one one time, and she mates with 17 drones, male bees, mm -hmm. in one flight. At the same time, in the air. Oh wow! Ooh, so okay. yes, that's <laughs> where we're going. We have social standards here, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, we, we, yeah the bees are not following those social standards. Yeah, so that's, that's the only flight that she has. That's oh, she'll yeah. spend the next five years in the hive playing eggs. Off of that? Off yeah. of that. Also, oh, she stores the yeah, stores it up and very cool. she'll actually spend the rest of her life inside the hive uh, laying eggs. Gotcha. And so and uh, she can lay up three thousand eggs per day. You know, oh you, goodness. You know, when it's the peak uh, times, one thing that uh, the bees actually life cycle they do is the queen will know when the uh, seasons are changing. Uh -huh. Or as when we start now, we're hitting up a lot of blooms, the orange blossoms that just start finishing off. And so she's building up the hive. She's laying more and more eggs every day. Yes, yes, and yes. throughout the summer, she'll you know build up. And that's, that's our whole goal. And it's uh, God's way and Mother Nature way of increasing the bee population and if that hive gets so full of bees they'll actually 
make another queen and swarm. Gotcha. And that's how they split hives mm -hmm. and uh, make poor population of, of the bees. So, and as fall comes in to play, then she'll start decreasing on the amount of eggs that she lays because they know they don't need as many mm -hmm. and they'll uh, reduce the population so they can uh, feed off of the forage that they have inside the hive. And so it's pretty, pretty interesting how, you know, and how long have you been an amateur beekeeper? Oh, you actually beekeep? Uh, if you want to get to it, I first started my first hive with uh, Steve Cantu. We had a, uh, a swarm come in our tree uh, outside our house. And we actually, uh, he came in, uh, showed us how to, he just sort of shook them in a box, and I kept them there. And I was <laughs> That's probably. How you get bees, you just shake yep, them in a box. just shake them in a box. <laughs> and, and they hung out there. I was probably about. 13 or 14, and my mom and dad thought I was crazy because I'd sit out there in the uh, afternoon the and that's about, oh, that's about adorable. a pair of shorts, and I would put honey <laughs> on my finger, and I would just stick it in at the edge of the hive, and they would just come out and lick it off of my. So they finger. eat their own honey. Yeah. Uh, okay. They, they will eat honey too. Yes. Let me. Uh, let's let's change these here. You want to sit here? Let me. Uh, sure. Because we got to get questions here. Okay. Uh, I don't. So around around we go. Tell me, what is honey? Like, honey is actually bee vomit. I knew, I knew Jonah was coming with that. <laughs> I'll be waiting on the bee spit. <laughs> so. That's what I was like, and so they can eat off their own vomit. Well, I guess you could because it's still food. You can do it too if you want well, to, but don't, just I'll, I'll don't try tomorrow. to share it with it's me. A, it's yeah. a new, new diet fashion. We'll try that tomorrow. So, so the way that it that that it's done is that the the forager bees will actually consume the nectar from the flowers. Okay. Put on the headphones. When they, when they get to the beehive, they start passing. They start vomiting that nectar that they consume. The as the uh, enzymes, those are proteins that, that break stuff down yeah. in their stomach, start working, and they start uh, turning that 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 nectar plus fluids plus and stuff, yucky stuff. stuff that we think about into actually honey. Okay. Uh, so they, they start passing, vomiting, uh, you know, into the other bee. The other bee uh, takes it up, vomits to the other bee, and, and so on. And, and, and that's, how, that's how nectar becomes, becomes honey. I always, thought I, I always thought it came out the other way. No, no, those were aphids. We can have the aphid talk the other yeah. <laughs> One thing about the honey, too, though, is when they put it in a comb, it's not honey, all, it's not honey mm -hmm. at that point. They will actually fan it and evaporate the uh, moisture like out of wings? it and like with their wings, and then that actually is when it starts becoming honey. It may take two or three weeks, all depending, mm -hmm. uh, for it actually to become honey. Then they'll cap it off once the moisture is at a certain point. That's one reason why honey is also uh, one of the uh, basically don't have a shelf life. Mm -hmm. They've actually found oh, honey in King Tut's right. tomb. Yeah, yeah. You know that was still good, and. We actually had a uh, person here a couple of years ago that had MRSA, and they came and asked him if he had any raw honey, and that's what they used to treat MRSA with, because it actually uh, infection can't you know uh, can't grow in it, oh. and so they'll put raw honey on it, and it'll help you know with MRSA. Um, Jill, she actually said that she healed an animal uh, they had an open wound, and they uh -huh. put some sort of honey on there, mm -hmm. and then the bandages and all that stuff. So it actually that's, yeah, that's she correct. Said exactly because of that. Did, because that that is correct. So it's pretty cool. It is pretty neat, and so uh, sort of amazing that it's uh, you know honey will last that long. Now it will uh, crystallize mm -hmm. on you at some point, but all you have to do is warm it up, and it'll go back. And to it normal. depends on the on the honey that. That's correct. That doesn't happen with every type of honey. That's correct. And it there's over 300 ty uh, uh, types of honey out there. And it, and if you ever get an opportunity, what's really neat is if you can buy or sample different flavors of honey, just line them up. Side by side, palmetto, orange blossom, wildflower, sourwood, tupelo, you know, and just taste the difference. And it's really uh, interesting how all the plants and all the flowers have a different taste when the honey. I never thought about that. I just thought honey tastes like honey. Yeah, one of my, my favorite is tupelo. Mm -hmm. um, I have that tried, one doesn't crystallize. That, there you go. And uh, then also there's some called sourwood that comes out of North Carolina. And it is bitter. I do not like Sour it, but I do know some people that really like it. And so, I like the, the sweet stuff. I guess the generic. What would be the generic equivalent of honey? Like, what would be the generic brand if there was a brand? 
would be is like honey. Honey. Regular honey. <laughs> <laughs> regular honey. I don't know. Uh, you know, it it basically just goes to back to producer who produces yeah. it. You know, the bees producer, of course, but uh, mm. whose uh, label is on it. Uh, I think one thing you have to look at is like when you get into some of the chain food stores. I'm, I'm, I don't want to go name a name, but some of them it'll be say honey sauce. Honey and sauce, it, and it's actually not really honey. It's high fructose syrup, and it just you know because it's cheaper to make oh, honey sauce what? than actually. Yeah, so when you go to look at some of that honey packages, you see, just look, see if it says actually honey or if it's honey sauce. Mm-hmm. I didn't say that. But you'll also see the same thing in grocery stores. Some of them, you know, they'll dilute it or add, you know, just make it, make their own. Yeah, some honey. of that you can tell it's really like watery. It's yeah, more watery correct. Yeah. But some of the honey uh, uh, varieties are, are watery. If you look at palmetto honey, it's very watery. Yeah. You got to read your label. There was a uh, there was a story that I read the other day of about a month ago I think with these two kids, they went and they destroyed, and killed about thirty thousand bees. And they did this. They just went to this guy's, you know, honeybee area and they just destroyed it. You know what thirty thousand bees look like? Half of the hive. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, so, they destroyed all the hives that were there, and there was about thirty thousand. He said total. Thirty thousand yeah. hives. Yeah. I, no, no, thirty thousand mm-hmm. bees. Yeah. So that's nothing. Well, to them, it was all their <laughs> something about they lost like about eighty thousand dollars worth of bees. Or if it's like thirty thousand bees, they're not losing that amount. That's about a, one half. Uh, one really? one hive can have up to up to eighty thousand bees. Let me see what I can find on here. But these two kids, where they went, they destroyed all of their hives, yeah. and it might have been just a small. I don't know if you remember that uh, when we had the uh, the uh, we started spring uh, uh, South Florida for something. I, it's, uh, mosquito. Oh, I never. I, my yeah. numbers were very off. Yeah. What was that? What was that thing that was uh, infecting? Folks? Oh, the Zika. The Zika oh, virus. Zika. Zika. Okay. When yeah. we when we uh, when we had the Zika episode uh, last year, uh, there was a, uh, a a beekeeper in South Carolina that made a complaint that the uh, sprays were actually killing his bees. And he lost like five hundred thousand bees, so that means that he actually lost like five hives. That's how much it says. Two kids kill half a million bees and wipe out. Wow, a half a million actually means that the thing. Yeah, you know, see, you guys know five your... to six hives. Yeah. Wow. You, you know, guys know it's nothing. The numbers. Yeah. To them, to this, well, to these the honey business that was there. That's them for them for their right. honey business. It was completely wiped out. So I'm pretty sure that that was a backyard person yeah. or somebody with a small. Uh, it's a honey operation, but yeah. it, you know, fifty hives they destroyed. It says fifty hives. That's not an accurate and, and that's, that's the thing, though. But but when you think about it, it's just like going back to um, when we talked about the kids and the food, where the food come from. You know, most people don't when you start know. getting in the media, they don't know actually how many bees are in the hive either. Yeah. Uh, so when you start, you know, hearing okay, thirty thousand bees. Well, okay, like John said, that may be one hive. Yeah. I, but then no once idea. you start saying okay, fifty hives, they destroyed fifty hives. Now that may be a totally different story. Yeah. There, and you're talking well, several million bees. Yeah. These kids are they? Um, they kicked over every single hive, killing all the bees. They they wiped them out completely. They broke into the shed. They took all the equipment, which equipment is, out. Which is kind of weird because if you kick a hive, you're not going to kill the bees. No, these guys like destroyed. Like they 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 just beat, de- the, they just beat the heck. They they did it all okay. maliciously. I know, no, no, I, I understand. But the way that it's that it's in my it's mind, structured. the structure of the incident does not. They you're can still have live a lot of unless, bees. Not, unless you have a blowtorch yeah. or something like that. You're like not destroying gonna, the structure. Gonna, structure. Yeah. Yeah, because they can live in.